Welcome to Toffee TV. Uh, we're going to have a chat about Farad Mashiri as the ongoing takeover saga continues to have twists and turns and pitfalls and divots and everything else um, as we we move towards, well, I don't say as we move towards a conclusion, that never seems to get anywhere near a conclusion. But Ped, I mean, this has been something that's been ongoing since September in terms of a full takeover. Mm. But in reality, this getting investments into the football club has been going on since January 2023, hasn't it? And in fact, a month before, the then CEO, Denise Barrett-Baxendale, said we're very close to signing an investment deal to bring money into the club. So that would have been December 22. Oh, she was very nearly good at her job once. Yeah. Um, but here we are in May 24 and, and not still uh, completed. Of course, this week as well, an extension to a deadline given to Triple Seven to take over amid a lot of stuff that they're going through. Mm. It's all as clear as mud, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's a mess, isn't it? And it's uh, the water is so muddy at the moment that it is really really hard to know what's going on we all thought that i think we all thought a couple of days ago that seeing got if you went back to friday night i think we all thought we were really close to the end of triple seven we really thought like it was it was done that saga it looked like it ran its course and, I, and don't get me wrong nothing really has changed my mind on on that mm -hmm. but obviously since then we've had it come out that far as Mitsuri has granted them an extension till the end of the month. Um, I don't know what they'll do with that because I don't know whether they'll still, <coughs> excuse me, have a company at the end of the month the way the rumours are about mm. them. So I think for us as fans, it's just a really horrible situation because it just, it, it'll, it the space, there's two weeks now mm. or whatever it is of just, we know we're going to get silence essentially from the football club. Not that we've had much out of them anyway. There is a meeting that's supposed to be taking place with the Fab and Fab machine next week, I believe. The third week, wasn't it? The third week in, in, in May. Mm. Maybe we'll get some clarity out of that. We have had clarity, a little bit of clarity out of the um, the communication with the Fab saying that we're, st we're still with 777, but we are actively looking at other people as well. So mm. I think we all just want some clarity. Of where we are yeah i mean literally says it on the thumbnail eh? but uh, we we do want clarity we need clarity because we've this process should have took around 12 weeks to get this sorted mm. and we know we first thought a year ago that msp were going to be the ones yeah. who, who did this um but obviously that for whatever reason that faltered and then Triple Seven stepped back in, didn't he? Because they'd initially been in the process, and it, it's been going on since then. And, and once we got into January, and they have been funding the club, I think some figures have come out this week that it's £158 million pound they've put into the football club, and a lot of reports were saying around £200 million. Apparently, that was £200 million, and it's around £158 million. That doesn't quite equate, because if you look at the exchange rate, it'd, it'd be a bit more than that, but... Let's say it's around 160 million that they put into the football club, or they've provided for Everton to continue operating. It's it's given Farad Mashiri the opportunity to step away from that and, and not have to you know source that money each month to complete the stadium, of course, and everything else. Like you said, there was a lot of rumours the other day that that was at the end, that was done. And then the next day there was the news that they give provided an extra eight million to keep going. So it isn't one or the other at the moment. You you know, you look at the way I look at it is one thing that I've said and I said this on another show we did. The thing that I've been really trying to get my head around the last few days is why? Why are we extending a deadline for them? Why are MSP agreeing to extend that mm. deadline if MSP are truly want to get in the foot in the door. I don't know whether they are, because we've had no clarity from anybody mm. on what everybody's point of view is. We just know that MSP, MSP, George Downing and AJ Bell and Farad Mashiri himself loaned the club £159 million 
all in, mm. whatever. But apparently, according to a, a report, I don't know how accurate it is, but Farad Mashiri put 20 million of that in, so that means it's 139. AJ Bell and George Downing give us the, the 39 million, which meant MSP had put 100 million in. There was a deadline on that payment of April 15th. That's come and gone. And no, we know it was extended for Triple Seven. So I'm trying to work out why Triple Seven would extend, uh, sorry, why MSP would extend that deadline for Triple Seven. Why Farad Mashiri would extend an agreement with somebody if there truly is other people in the background. Mm. Because why go through all of this pain for eight months to continue to do it? And the thing I'm sat with is, is there truly nobody else there wanting it, really? And so what they're doing is going, well, this is our best way of protecting our money because there's only these people who want it. Problem is, you've just mentioned there yourself, those all those factors involved, you've also got... Um, right to media funding. It could be up to 200 million, you and say. It's believed that that they hold um, a lot of the cards mm. when it comes to the football club and, and, and what they would get if Evan defaulted on those on that loan. Um, so they, they were the initial people who we were told stopped MSP from getting mm. in because of what MSP were offering wouldn't match what they had in the club. Mm. So you've got all these different things. You've got the, I think it's Metro Bank, isn't it? Of course, as well. We've got it's twenty million money with as well. You've got all these factors, and it's you know you spin on plates all the time. And what you need is, well, what we've heard of today is that they've Everton have been offered money by another company now, mm -hmm. um, one hundred and forty million, is it? One hundred and fifty. Fifty, is it? By so, G D Luma, I yeah. think it is. And that's that feels more like, well, without without. No one. Mm. That feels like that could be a payment that could finish the stadium and pay off MSP, MSP in yeah. one go. Mm. So you've got that problem sorted. Well, you've got two problems sorted. Mm. You've just consolidated. It might. Who, who knows what the interest rate is going to be on that, and who knows what the time is going to be on that. But that might help take one, one if not two problems off the table straight mm. away, and then you're only left with these other problems. Right and fund, uh, right and media funding. I don't think. Are an issue as such. Mm. They don't. They're not bothered. You just repay them. Yeah. And a lot of clubs use them. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not, okay. I'm not saying like, not saying, just saying they're no, not. We're not. They're not. Yeah. They just want to be paid. Yeah. As in, you know. Yeah, they don't want the football. They're not. They're not bothered. <clears throat> they. That's what they. They do. They give loans out and they get. They get decent interest mm. back on it. Um. So they're not. So maybe losing MSP from the equation. Simply because of the loan might open the door and and for other people because you are getting rid of all these pro problems because no nobody wants to buy this football club wants to pay this debt they, they, they don't want to do that they don't want to get involved in that and that's why the weird administration raises itself because people believe that's like the cleaner solution um for that for the whole thing and if Everton went into administration it would clear all the debts and Everton would have no more problems and it'd just be like rainbows everywhere it'd be amazing but it's not like it's not that's not reality. But for sh sharks in the water who, who see the blood, for them it's like yeah, get rid of your debt and we'll come in and save you. It's like no, never you can't get to that stage. So hopefully, hopefully somebody appears, somebody raised their head. Um, who knows whether the seven 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 exclusivity period has stopped them? Just because there's so much, it might be a time factor. It might be that. The longer somebody else is paying the bills, and longer that the state till the st closer to the stadium getting completed is less money for somebody else. Mm. Evan is still broken. It's still broken with a stadium or without a stadium. Mm. But if you've got a stadium, you're not paying any more for this club. But you get this nice, amazing new modern stadium. It's allegedly worth a billion pounds. And and it it might be that someone out there, like very clever person or group of people might just be biding the time and this might not be the time to buy the football club wait till some of these debts have gone away wait till that stadium is ready to go you know it could just be a factor of like we talked about this before where it was like even if you waited till the first of july you're talking like over a million pound off the off the the uh, the, the wages just from starting in the first of july instead of the first of mm -hmm. june you know you talk about players wages going out the delhi 
and Andre Gomez and whoever else, that's mm. over a million pound a month is that you don't have to pay for. Mm. That's all he's it for us it's purgatory. We're stuck, we're in limbo. But for someone on the outside they might be thinking, We know exactly when we're gonna strike mm. and uh, we're waiting for that moment. Is it is it plausible that Farad Mashiri is doing this? He knows that triple seven aren't really gonna have the funds by the end of the month anyway, and mm. the, it gives him a little bit of relief because I, when I say relief, I mean relief that he doesn't have to pay it. He, he's paid it a long time. There's a lot of the problem is there's a lot of stuff bouncing around. There's MSP are playing a blind because they're going to get the club for li minimum. Mm. Who's really funding Triple Seven? Yeah. Is it some fella who's been involved with us before? You hear those rumours going around. Mm. Other rumours that there's other venture capitalist groups waiting, like you said, for an exclusivity period to finish. We know there is a, apparently there's a hard deadline of 31st of May. Um, the triple seven, and if it isn't done by then, then apparently that is the end of it. We've heard rumours in the last seven to ten days that Farad Mashiri is looking at other people as well. Apparently, it's been the case. I am a little bit surprised that there's been no real concrete interest in terms of someone willing to let it be known that they want it. But you know, everybody, everyone's different, and when we mustn't forget when Farad bought the club. There was no mention of him. It was the two Americans, wasn't it? Mm. Who looked like they were gonna, you know, they were making all the noise and Mashiri rocked up and had the club sorted. But do you think from his perspective that or rather from our perspective, that Farad Mashiri should come out and speak? Because it's all very well going on, oh, I'm, I'm happy, these mm. are still the best people and we'll leave it in another few weeks. But it's damaging a football club because you know, things have got to be put in place. Pre season's got to be. I know that'll still be ticking along as it has to, but I just think he's really now got to come out and, and put a stop to this. Either accept it, but then again, it probably isn't down to him because it's where the Triple Seven can prove they've got money and it seems their problems are just spiraling. But I, I can only put it on far out because he's the person selling it. Yeah, I think. I think triple seven's over now, isn't it? It's done. I think. All the, do you see no way that they no, get the club? Got, they money. No, I'm just, I'm just saying. I haven't got. Mm. That's, I mean, okay, like I haven't seen their bank accounts, but mm. it seems to me, from evidence, just other people's evidence, just the general consensus is is that they've run out of spending other people's money. That's the general consensus, isn't it? Mm. And they haven't proved anything otherwise. Now. There's a lot going on with them at the moment. There's a lot of other issues with, you know, you look at the standard A situation, you look mm -hmm. at the airline situation. The airline situation in Australia could stop one of them actually being uh, being able to be at Everton because it, mm -hmm. it goes against the fit and proper test because they've gone into administration. Mm -hmm. Straight away, there's a problem. Um, standard A is saying they can't even get in touch with them and the bank accounts are empty. Yeah. You know, the, the, I think there's something come out today from Standard A saying that, they want to be sold straight away because this can't get the fans have said they have to be sold. We know mm. that the game got suspended. These are massive alarm bells. And we've seen this from a lot of the opposite a lot of the fans of the clubs that they represent so far. And it's these are obviously very worrying signs. And I think I think I just think that's done now. I think whichever way you've we've looked at it so far, I think the the signs are now that it's done and mm. I think it has to be put I think that's the biggest fear is that saying that they're getting another two weeks when all evidence is is that they don't have any money to con to run Everton Football Club um, is that's the evidence you need so that's out the window what happens next well could is Farad Mashiri in any kind of position to take back control of the football club and appoint a top quality board and say, do you know what? Made loads of mistakes, but I'm going to hand this over to someone till, by the way, till I get an approach, a good approach, a proper approach, because it can't... No, that's the other side of it. We've had this board, and we've had Colin Chong running the football club for coming up to a year now, mm -hmm. and we are rudderless. 
absolutely rudderless. Everybody knows that. And we're having to do deal, new kit deals. I'm sure there's new sponsorship deals in the works. Kevin Felwell is trying to sort the player side of it out. He's juggling, he's already said. There's going to be, there has to be reality this summer. He's in a no-win situation. He's going to have to sell players that it's going to upset the fan base and replace them with probably players who, who aren't, well, we know will be as good as them. So is there a situation where Fahad Mishiri can go, actually, I'm not going to just sit here and let this fall apart, waiting for that night and shining armor. Mm. I have to do something about this. And it makes you wonder whether he'd actually done that last year. And and because and, we're a year down the line, and I know it's a case of he hasn't been bankrolling it, but what if he last year put a really decent CEO on? We'd be a year. Would maybe we'd have been a year better off, earning more money, uh, having more you know avenues for for money coming into the club. I, I don't I don't know, but he, he can't sit there now. Surely, you know we 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 supposedly going to hear from them next week through the fab, like you said. Mm-hmm. Now that'll be interesting as well because will that be will that be questions that he'll just answer? Will there be a back and forth? Will he be picked up on what he said? I, th- I think this fella's got to come out and he's been at Everton a long time now. I think he's got to come out and start speaking. Sit down and do a real proper interview with someone skilled. Mm. And that's nothing against anyone at the Fab because that's just that's not that's not an interview for that's not an interview. Mm. That should be a grilling. But I think he should sit down with someone and do a proper interview about the future of this football club because all the rumours and this weird administration being thrown around and it's not it's not good for anyone's anyone's mental health. <laughs> for any any fan has to sit there, you know, we've just survived another season. And you straight away you're worrying. Everyone have to sell this player, this sell place for administration. That's not good for a fan base. It's not good for anything. You know, you, even if you're talking about, you want that feel good factor of we're in the Premier League next season, last season at Goodison Park. You want to celebrate that. Mm-hmm. You want some of these clouds hanging over you so you can't enjoy it. And it does affect the business. It must affect the business. It must affect whether people go into the club shop and buy stuff. It must affect whether, every, you know, someone decides whether they're going to. Uh, take the plunge and go and buy a, a, a posh seat at the new the new ground and all these kinds of mm. things. It it affects all of our moods. We know that. We know it affects our moods because we we you see everyone's the state of their mental health on social media and everything. Can it, it, it's been a real struggle the last few years. And you can't you can't just you know you can't you can't just sit there, can you, and go, oh, this doesn't matter. Mm. You know, Matt, we fucking love this club. All of us mm. do. We absolutely pour our heart and soul into it. So many people in different ways pour their heart and soul into this football club. And to not know where you are as a football club and where you're going and who's going to own you, it's that's, that's powerful stuff. That, 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 that affects everybody. And I think he owes it to us mm. to sit down and speak to, speak to someone who's really going to push him on things and, and it might be uncomfortable for him, but I'm not being funny. You, you've got away with the last 12 months by pushing 777 in front of us all and making them, you know, all eyes have been on triple seven. Oh, mm. these are not good enough. No one's been going, what's this fella doing about it? Mm. What's he doing in the meantime? He owes us that, I think. If at the very least, like an exit interview to say, you know, to say what the situation is because... Mm. This is going to be a very, very tough summer. We all know that. We all know what... And I don't think... I think we're all in the mood or the mindset that we were at the beginning of the season where it's like, it's not a shock to us now. We're all used to it. We've all been conditioned to it. Mm. We're going to lose... Could potentially lose some serious talent this summer, which, of course, is going to affect us next season on the pitch. And then it's... An, it's a season then of more stress. And it's just continuing and continuing mm. and continuing. That's, that's, I don't think that's fair. It's not fair on fan base. It's not fair on. I don't think it's fair on Sean Dyche. Mm. Um, it's not fair on the squad either. They don't, they don't deserve that. People have worked hard this season. Okay, we've had our ups and downs, and people have worked hard to do their jobs. And yeah, it, it, you know, we we need we need answers, and we need them soon. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I think he's got a. He's the he's the owner. It's it's at his. Behest, really, who he sells to. It's mm. all, all on him, isn't it? He's the 
0.1% owner of Everton Football Club and he's got to come out and put a tidy dish up very quickly and if he's, if he's going to step back into mm. the breach and look for different people and he'll cover it while he does, he's got to do it properly and that is, like you say, appoint a proper board. If he's not going to do that, then he needs to have serious conversations and, and be selling his football club to people who are ready to take it on because the fans don't deserve this. It just goes on and it goes on and it goes on. We've got through the season, a very, very challenging season. Mm -hmm. The manager and the players have, have stuck together at the end and got, got the job done. And by the way, by the way, and I think we can say it now, this fella's a fault for all the point deductions. Doesn't matter what, mm. what the Premier League give us. This is mm. the fella who's, who's a fault for it. Mm. He caused us all this stress. Mm. You know, two points deduction, that's because of him. He's mm. to blame. Not anybody else. Him and his board are to blame for what we've had to go through. Mm. Yes, we stood up to the Premier League and said how ridiculous it was that we what the points we got and how it worked mm. and, and the fact that you know, it was 10 points and it stayed 10 points for months and all these kind of things. It comes down to it at the end of the day. He caused all those problems. Yeah, they, they, they put a... Again, I always go back to when we got him and the hope when we got yeah. him. But the biggest mistake he made was not putting his own people in yeah. straight away, or or at least after a year. And having a, we lost control of what he, was he going lost on. control. He left it in the hands of absolute amateurs, mm. and also amateurs who got paid really well to go away. And you know, he must have seen that. He he'll have known what was going on at the football club. He'll have he maybe some of those people told them that things had to change and maybe he didn't listen. So mm. the book stops with him on that. Mm. And, and Everton might fail PSR again next year and it'll be his fault mm. because it's been, we're trying to, we're trying to get out of the situation we're in and we've had to spend money on players to do that and we're not trading well and we don't, we have terrible deals mm. and we don't, you know, you go in the club shop and there's never anything in there that you want and it, it all, you know, it all comes down to who runs the football club and it's him. Mm. He took his eye off the ball quite early on. And I think Jamie Carragher said it recently. He said he had his pants pulled down. He was manipulated by people who knew a lot more about oh, yeah. situations mm. than he did. And he's been led down so many garden yeah, paths yeah, I think because he, he didn't have professionals in place to deal with it. He's put, he's threw money at it, no question about yeah, it. Yeah. He, he put money into it. He's the stadium will be his biggest legacy yeah, yeah. because obviously he's got that done. But he has put us we're, we're right on the brink and that should never have no. been the case because we were in debt when he come, albeit a small amount of debt, manageable mm -hmm. debt. And he come and there was money there and, and Everton said it before when he took over with his money, there's not a chance it should have gone this way. Everton should no. have been winning trophies no, and, and in the Champions League. With the team they had at the time exactly. and the money and the funds that he made available. <laughs> no other football club in the Premier League is anywhere near the sit in the situation we are. You know, they've got models that work, whether it be a Brighton or Brentford self mm. self funding, mm. or I've got owners who put the money in the pocket but also develop the businesses or, or savvy enough put to sell ho people in. sell hotels to eat themselves and stuff like that. Mm. We haven't got you know, we put ourselves in a situation where we had one big sponsor, obviously, putting loads of money into the football club, and yeah. I'm afraid you, you lie with dogs, you get fleas. Well, let's have it. I mean, just very quickly, let's just have a look at some of the hard numbers from him. You know, he got involved, owner since 2016. He owns 94.1% of the business. He spent £640 million on players during his tenure. The net spend of that is £184 million, which isn't exactly big over an eight-year period. And there's been 10 managers in the hot seat since he come in, two of them interim managers, but he's had eight what you would class as full-time managers in his period in eight years. And when he took over, we'd three had... Three directors we, of football as well. Three directors of football on it. We'd had three managers in 14 years when he took over. And we've got we've had eight in eight. And and that's where the instability has come. And he, it, 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 we're talking about... We're talking about a football club that never moved into the Premier League era. And then when it had the ability to really step up, mm, didn't didn't because it still was ran by the same principles that it has always been ran mm. by, like a corner shop, mm. like a local corner shop. And as I said, there's so many things that, don't, number one, don't get me wrong, right, and you said it before, 
He identified straight away. A stadium must be built. Mm. It's the only way to take this club forward. Yeah. And that's exactly what he done. Mm. But then he didn't get any funding for it. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like he didn't get any funding for it. Like he decided yeah, and I know things got in you know, things got in the COVID, economic changes. COVID and and, yeah. and the and the war and mm. stuff. But he, he didn't but he did never put a plan in place before mm. the stadium. He just had this you know, he decided that's what he was going to do. And some people can do that and some people can cough up and have got the money to do it. Well, he would have... But let's be clear. And, we, you know, we'll wrap it up now. But let's be clear. Without the Russia-Ukrainian thing, ever, he would have paid for the stadium. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they got... They got... They looked at mortgage in the stadium before it started. And in, I think it was 4.5% yeah. or something where interest rates were naught. Yeah, yeah. So he thought in the long run it'll be mm. better to just self-fund it and try to get money on the way. Obviously, we ran into two huge factors that have affected yeah. his ability to fund of course. the stadium and his ability to fund Everton Football mm. Club. But no matter which way you spin it, not putting the proper CEO and not putting the proper his own people in the board yeah. to drag the football club through, there hasn't well, been enough I mean, change. This... And that's the one thing that whoever gets the club next has to do it has to be a, a clean sweep. it'd have to be anyway we haven't got a pair we haven't got anyone there have we we've got to be no, but that's the point though isn't it I mean we've been you know we celebrate 10 years next year of being a channel oh yeah. and the whole time we've been doing this it's, it was the same problem mm. the people at the top the people running the club has always been the issue mm. not being able to move into that 21st century thinking and everything being done in a certain way and mm. Father Michel did come in and with, as I said, with standards and, you know, you look at the situation with the live buildings and how amazing that all looks and obviously with the ground, but it, but there's not, there's nothing there to back it up. It still had the same people who were poor at their jobs, you know, promoting someone from within who'd been at the charities, one of the worst decisions that Everton have ever made Mm -hmm. in a time where where there's a billionaire Mm -hmm. and a billionaire standing behind them as well. Mm -hmm ready to push this club forward and it, it should have been built on the premise of being in a self-funding situation mm. not just a new stadium mm. but other elements of this of the club as well um and it never was and it was almost like we were waiting for the new stadium rather than you know but it but that's another issue though wasn't it mm. that idea of like oh when we get to the stadium it'll get done when we get to the stadium we'll get what... done. and you know we've been sitting here for years mm. talking about these things of like why don't you do it now? No, we'll do it when a new stadium yeah. comes. Yeah, but but you can do it now, can't? Yeah, but we'll wait till the new stadium. Clean break, then, isn't it? It's like the thing with when we move to the new stadium. Clean break. Mm. It's all these decisions that get kicked down the road because it's oh, that's that's when the clean break. Mm. And while that's been going on, the world keeps spinning, and other clubs keep evolving, and other 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 you know, there's lots of different PSR has reared its head. Mm. You know, even that PSR, you know, I know it wasn't a thing, but someone surely should have been there to say, you know, that thing over there, it's going to... But they were, we know they were warned about it and the, the, the point of view at the time is it'll never come, you yeah. won't do us, it'll never yeah. come in. Cause... Because the old way of thinking, everyone still thinks the old way, oh, you know, chairman will pick up the phone and speak to I'm someone sure and that'll it. sort it all out yeah. and I'll get a great deal. Oh, well... <laughs> We've put the world to right. I don't know if we've solved go. anything. No, but... no. Well, I, don't, I think there's only one person yeah. that can solve it, really, and that's Farad Mashiri. Let us know what you think in the comment yeah. section. Is it time for him to just go? Yeah, it's I, surely it is. And I, re- I, I, I really look forward to what the Fab have got to say that's to them. Because, the... because without putting any pressure on them, and I don't think there has to be any pressure on them, they're in that position now where they get to hopefully sit down, speak to them, and ask the painting questions. And I think... Those questions have got to be mm. straight to the point, nailed on, and no holds barred because what? we deserve answers. And and those people are all have been put in the positions. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Tony, yeah. they'll want answers, won't they? Yeah. And luckily, they're the ones who'll get in front of them, and hopefully, they'll be they'll be able to make our feelings, mm. as in for the Evertonians' mm. feelings, put them across to them to to see the urgency yeah. and sorting this out because it's limbo and you yeah. can't. Football moves so quick, you can't just sit on your hands. And I'm no. sadly, he has been sitting on Well, look, just, just before we finish as well, just to say, you know, well done for the FAB and the Shareholders mm. Association for putting in such strong 
uh, statements as mm. well about this because it it needed to be done. It needed to be quick. It couldn't drag on, and they did that. And they, you know, they were straight straight in. Straight forced an issue, aren't they? they yeah. How they people. put it out there yeah. in the media straight away? In the media, want this story because when you listen to people, when you I was listening to Henry Winter in the last couple of days talking about it, and he's just like, you know, this can't go on. You know, all the journalists are saying Everton won still one of the great institutions mm. of 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 whale football or whatever you want whatever you where you look at it there's, there's no way these people should be running 777 so that shows this fella in a really bad light that he wanted to sell it but mm. now that it looks like they're not what's he going to do and i think it was important that those people are speaking up for the football club and that's because the shareholders and the fab put it out there obviously you were representing uh, different elements of the fan base mm, absolutely let's know what you think in the comments section below give the video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't come on far that do the right thing see you later